All right, got a little bit of a will it start video on a new truck I just bought. It's a 1980 Louisville series, so it's an L700. It's got a 370 big block Ford V8, four barrel. It's been uh, sitting for a few years, but it was on the road. Uh, last year for a little bit Pretty clean truck needs a seat good cleaning it's Got the keys Got a title It's got the uh, Dayton style wheels There she is. He said it was driving just fine and then it kind of cut out like it lost ignition. So I've got one of those uh, HEI distributors. I'm going to pull that distributor out real quick. Swap in the new one. Uh, find a key on. 12 volt source up there on the wall and just run a wire down to the distributor and I should definitely have spark then so this is a Clark 5 speed I doubt it's an overdrive apparently some of them did some of them didn't it's just a farm truck I think it's been on the farm since 1980 it's got a giant brand flatbed. Those are made in Council Bluffs, just across the river. Kind of unusual having dual tanks. He said this tank hasn't been used in years and it looks pretty rusty inside, but I'd like to get it uh, cleaned out. Tumble it with some rocks in it. Get it back working. But, uh... Ooh, starting for it. Oh, yeah, premium. Not bad. My goal for the truck is to obviously take the grain sides off, and I want to use it as basically a flatbed. It does have hydraulics, all that works. Apparently, as long as I can get her running. So, I will uh, set the camera up and swap this distributor out. Alright, I discovered when I took the cap off to see the orientation of the rotor that the uh, cap had a bunch of scaling on the uh, metal surfaces inside the cap so I cleaned all that off cleaned the rotor off cleaned the the contacts on the cap off I'm curious if it'll just run since they were so dirty I figured before I dig in there and tear that all out it does have a new ignition uh, one of them's they're both new ones for the ignition ones for the alternator but either way I'm gonna spray a little starting fluid down the carb and start it from right here see if it takes off or not see if it has any spark I'll see if I can get my phone set up somewhere to record it and I'll just hold it it'll be shaky but let's see if she's got some spark <laughs> The key is in the run position. So if there's spark, it should take off. Oh, we 
a spark of some kind. She was sputtering. Maybe we can get her to go. Sounds nice and even. choke let me pull that choke lever she'd probably be running it's about 45 degrees out so probably cold enough to need the joke it's the lights what's that say lights joke there we go oof da oh, that doesn't really want to pull too good but maybe that'll give me some choke Sorry about the jerky camera work. There we go. Choke is on. Let's see if we're getting fuel. I'm assuming since it rained last year, the fuel shouldn't be too terrible. Give it a little squirt. See what happens. Definitely running under its own power. Sounds like it's hitting on all eight. It's got a bad exhaust leak, which I saw when I looked at it last week. I wonder. There's this manual throttle thing. I'm trying to see if it'll spin. So you can idle it up. So if you're using the PTO, you can crank the throttle up, keep it at a higher RPM. Let's see if it'll. Tech doesn't work. Dang it. Seems to run pretty good. Not too shabby. See if the old girl will move here in a minute. I'll be back. Now I did give a whiff into this tank. It uh it doesn't smell horrible it doesn't even look too bad it's really not that bad i mean it definitely smells like it's a couple years old but not not ancient shows a quarter tank on the gauge i've got five gallons of fresh i'm gonna go ahead and just toss it in there that way it'll kind of mix up i got like a four or five mile drive back to the shop so I want to give it a fighting chance well uh turns out the uh the owner is right <laughs> it's like it'll run for a couple minutes and then it's like the ignition just turns off so i'm guessing one of these control modules is bad yeah, there's your problem um uh, so i'm gonna go ahead and swap this distributor dang it all right, I did end up getting the, um, so the issue the truck was having was it would run for less than five minutes and cut out. 
and it was like a losing spark. Like I said, it has a newer box. Um, he'd replaced the coil recently. So I just went with a Speedway HEI big block Ford uh, distributor. That way I knew I just needed one ignition source, one wire from the ignition to make this thing have spark and better spark than it did. So I fished out the old distributor, which was kind of a nightmare because I'll show you, it was uh, seized in there and you couldn't really get in there to get a pair of vice grips or channel locks on the distributor to kind of work it back and forth and free it up. So I ended up taking the power steering cooler, power steering pump off and this bracket just so I had a straight shot on there, put some vice grips on there, got the distributor working back and forth and it came right out. So now it's got the HEI. I did, uh, I did get it running. I did drive it five miles back to the shop. So we are back at the shop, but it was kind of hectic. Needed to kind of, you know, get, he had the, the farmer I bought it from had stuff to do. So I just, uh, didn't film it at the time, but it did pop right off, you know, adjusted it a little bit, made it, uh, got it kind of in time just off the ear and drove it back. It drove pretty good. Didn't overheat. Everything, uh, stopped fine, went fine. I mean, obviously not a powerhouse by any means, but it did do pretty good. I'll, uh, I'll set the camera up in cab and kind of give you a short little drive around with it. Back inside the luxurious cab. Oh man, it's running 2000 RPM. Um, you know, a decent amount of amenities for a 1980 truck. I do have that bezel for that. Got wipers, got lights, got the roof lights. Obviously all your controls. This does have dual tanks. So there is a tank switch valve. That's the actual mechanical switch. And then if you switch this gauge, it switches, or sorry, if you switch that from right to left, that actually changes the fuel level for which tank it's on. Uh, speedo doesn't work, tack doesn't work, charging gauge doesn't work, temp gauge doesn't work, but the fuel and oil pressure do work. So, you know, to be expected of a 43-year-old uh, farm truck. So, and apparently miles are original, 35,000. Bought new in 1980. I believe it's been on the same farm ever since. And, you know, these are only worked a month out of the year hauling grain. So, they don't get a whole lot of miles. So, I'll uh, go ahead and start it up. It does have a Clark 5-speed. It does have a Eaton 2-speed rear axle. Grab the key. Pop it off. Maybe. It does have a manual throttle. These are the PTO controls for the bed. Uh, this front knob is to engage the PTO. PTO obviously turns the hydraulic pump. And then this valve, if you push it in, it'll lower the bed. If you pull the knob out on this one, it'll lift the bed. And that all works just fine. This power steering pump's a little growly, but... I will take you, I'll set you up here on the dash and take you for a short little drive.
this knob, put the clutch in. Okay. So with that knob all the way up. Disengage. Oh crap, the dome light even works. What are the odds? change that little hood latch and the little uh, I don't even know like what, what would you technically call that little this is the corner of the truck indicator tore off the other side but I'm pretty happy with it the uh, this tank hadn't been used in a while so it needs to get removed and cleaned there's a exhaust leak on the manifold on this side. I am obviously not keeping the grain beds. The uh, I'll probably cut. I'll probably cut the sides down. This is the. Uh, this is for if you put cattle in it, you swing these up. I'll probably cut these about two foot high and keep them. Off to the side just uh, in case I need to haul something and keep it contained like you know gravel or sand or whatever at least I do have some kind of sides for it they are nice how they spin in there there's four of those on each side I do have the gate for it the rear gate here so I eventually want a put a hydraulic beaver tail on this so I can tip it up and then hydraulically set that beaver tail on the ground and just load equipment straight on it these are the 9x20s they are split rims um, you can get the 22.5 uh, you know normal semi tire wheels for these pretty abundantly so I'm going to keep my eye out and convert these from 20s to 22.5s. Just so, you know, if I ever break down, flat tire, I'm on the road. You know, it's easily serviceable, easy to get a tire for. But uh, overall, pretty happy with it. Um, I do have this truck's sister. Same farm, same model. This is the LN700 23K capacity. And this one's a 1980 uh, from the same guy. I did buy a 76 LN700. It's white with uh, a red stripe. I will be getting that back here. Motors and pieces, but uh, I will probably end up diesel swapping the white one. But basically same truck different color different year same capacity same transmission same rear axle so uh, in the white one this one will be a flat tail flat bed with a beaver tail and the white one will probably get converted to a uh, container truck so it'll tilt down to the ground and we'll winch on containers with it at least that's the uh, plan for now but uh, I'm pretty happy. Got them both bought. Got to get the other one hauled over here. 
but uh, pretty happy with the purchase. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.